delivering quality education, expanding access to learning, serving learners' learning needs, tackling challenges of the present time, supporting every learner's dream, reaching young Pagomenos where they are today. Advancing in the challenge of distance learning, the official TV-based instruction of Death at Tagum City, bringing you quality education straight to your home. Plug yourself in. This is Death at TV. Na students welcome to another episode of new learning filled with knowledge and fun only here at salida la filipina tv i am your art teacher teacher may and c sacro from la filipina national high school join me and together let us take this art blowing journey as we explore the world of east asian arts In this session, our lesson objectives are First, recognize the different paintings in East Asia Second, determine the characteristics of paintings in East Asia And third, realize the relevance of the characteristics of paintings in East Asia to its culture These three objectives lead to our most essential learning competency which is to identify characteristics of arts and crafts in specific countries of East Asia. This time, to check your prior knowledge in this topic, let us now have a short test. This is an identification type of test. As pictures of the different arts and crafts in East Asian countries are shown, you need to identify which country they belong, based on their characteristics. Your choices are China, Japan, and Korea. Again, your answer should be China, Japan, or Korea. Select your answer from the three choices and write it on a separate sheet of paper. You will be given 5 seconds to answer. And when you hear this sound, then time is up. Let's start. Number 1. To what East Asian country this artworks belong? Is it from China, Japan, or Korea? Your time starts now. Time's up. Let's reveal the answer. This artworks belong to Japan. Number two. 
To what East Asian country these artworks belong? Is it from China, Japan, or Korea? Your time starts now. Time's up! Let's reveal the answer. These artworks belong to China. How about these artworks? To what East Asian country they belong? Is it from China, Japan, or Korea? Your time starts now. Time's up! The correct answer is Korea. Did you find the test easy or difficult? If you had a hard time, that is okay. Take this as a challenge to learn more about this topic. Today, we will focus our discussion on paintings being one of the highest forms of art in East Asia. If you were asked to make a painting, what would you paint? In East Asia, the objects or items that are usually put into paintings are called subjects, themes, or motifs. This may be animals, people, landscapes, and anything about the environment. In relation to this, let's have an activity in which you are going to identify the subjects of the paintings that will be shown to you. I will give you 60 seconds to write your observations on another sheet of paper. In no particular order, write the subjects of these paintings. Your time starts now! Your time is up! Let's see if you got them right. The subjects shown on the paintings are flower and bird, bamboos and stones, temple, human figures, landscapes, and animals. Wow! I believe you did well in our activity. Keep it up! I will further discuss the different paintings of East Asia and their characteristics. The paintings of East Asian countries portray different subjects, themes, or motifs. Let us now travel in the land of the sleeping giant, China. Chinese paintings consist of different subjects or themes. These include flowers and birds, landscapes, palaces and temples, human figures, animals, bamboos, and stones. Moreover, landscape painting was regarded as the highest form of Chinese painting. Chinese society, basically agricultural, has always laid great stress on understanding the pattern of nature 
and living in accordance with it. Silk and paper are the common materials used in Chinese paintings. In addition, the ideologies of Confucianism, Taoism, and Buddhism played an important role in Chinese art. This is an example of a Chinese painting that expresses the human understanding of the relationship between nature and humans. This is evident in a form of painting of landscapes, bamboo, birds, and flowers. This might be called the metaphysical Taoist aspect of Chinese painting. Do you know the Chinese characters written on the painting? This is known as calligraphy, which is the art of beautiful handwriting. To the Chinese poets, they write their calligraphy on their paintings. In its distinctive Chinese form, calligraphy offers an important channel for the appreciation of traditional culture and for arts education. It is also a source of pride and pleasure for the Chinese people and embodies important aspects of the country's intellectual and artistic heritage. Your beautiful handwriting is considered calligraphy. So, keep on writing not only beautifully but also artistically. Let us now explore the land of the rising sun, Japan. In Japan, people use a technique for printing text, images, or patterns, which they call woodblock printing. It originated in China as a method of printing on text times, but eventually became a method for printing on paper. This method was adopted in Japan during the Edo period in 1603 to 1867 and became one of their oldest and most highly developed visual art. The most common theme or subject in Japan for printmaking describes scenes from everyday life. It narrates the scene and is often packed with figures and details. This is an example of Japan's woodblock printing of the famous Mount Fuji. Another example of a Japanese art using the woodblock printing is Yukiyue, which shows scenes of harmony and carefree everyday living of Japanese people. Subjects of Yukiyue also include female beauties, theater actors, and sumo wrestlers. To know more about this Japanese art, let us watch this short video. The term ukiyo means floating world, an idea which reflected the hedonistic and carefree lifestyles of Japan's rising middle class. Woodblock prints had been created in Japanese culture as early as the 8th century BC. Back then, they were used mainly to reproduce Buddhist seals and images, and eventually scriptural text. By the early 17th century, the artist Sotatsu began using woodblocks to print elaborate artistic designs on paper and silk. At the beginning of the 17th century, when woodblock printing had just begun, Japan had reached a turning point. After years of war and economic struggles, the nation finally achieved peace and prosperity under the rule of the Tokugawa family. Japan's increasing wealth allowed for a mass production, purchase, and transportation of goods which had never been possible before. Among the mass production of goods, ukiyo-e prints became popular between 1615 and 1858. They were especially popular among merchants, the lowest class of Japan's Confucian social hierarchy at the time. The merchants actually benefited the most financially during the Edo period. As the merchant class grew wealthier, ukiyo-e art became a popular symbol of wealth. Many families decorated their homes with prints featuring beautiful geishas, kabuki actors, historical events, and the natural world. Now, let's move forward to the land of high mountains and sparkling streams, Korea. It is said that until the Joseon dynasty, the primary influence of Korean paintings were Chinese paintings. However, Korean paintings have subjects such as landscapes, facial features, Buddhist topics, and an emphasis on celestial observation 
in keeping with the rapid development of Korean astronomy. Mountains and water are important features in Korean landscape painting because they are sites for building temples and buildings. Moreover, in South and North Korea, subjects are divided into five categories. These are landscape paintings, Minwa, which is the traditional folk painting, four gracious plants composed of plum blossoms, orchids or wild orchids, chrysanthemums, and bamboos, bamboo, and portraits. Let's examine this Korean painting. What is the subject that is being portrayed? Yes, this Korean painting portrays the four gracious plants, namely the plum blossoms, orchids, chrysanthemums, and bamboos, which represent the country's four seasons, the spring, summer, fall, and winter. Truly, East Asian arts are marvelous. They reflect the rich and unique culture of China, Japan, and Korea. a summary of the important information and the characteristics of East Asian arts in the form of paintings. Paintings from China, Japan, and Korea portray different subjects, themes, or motifs. In China, their paintings are about flowers and birds, landscapes, palaces and temples, human figures, animals, bamboo, and stones. Landscape painting was regarded as the highest form of Chinese painting because Chinese people always give importance to nature. Also, Chinese poets usually write their calligraphy on their paintings. In Japan, people use the woodblock printing technique to print images on papers. The most common theme in Japan for printmaking describes scenes from everyday life. Yukiyue is the best known and most popular style of Japanese art that is related to the style of woodblock printmaking. The common themes of Yukiyue include Japanese theater actors and female beauties. In Korea, painting subjects or themes are divided into five categories. These are Landscape paintings, Minwa or the traditional folk painting, Four gracious plants, Bamboo and portraits. Mountains and water are important features in Korean landscape painting because they are sites for temples and buildings. Painting is indeed one of the highest forms of art in East Asia. Let us check how much you have learned from the discussion. This is a multiple choice type of test. Choose the letter of your answer and write it on separate sheet of paper. You will be given 5 seconds to answer and when you hear this sound, then time is up. Let's have the first question. Suppose that you are an artist organizing an art exhibit showcasing the paintings of China. Based on the characteristics of these paintings, which of them does not belong to the group? Letter A Letter B Letter C And Letter D your time starts now. Your time is up. Let's reveal the answer. The painting which does not belong to the group is 
letter C. Because it is a woodblock print showing the ordinary living of Japanese people near Mount Fuji. Let's proceed to the second question. By looking at this Korean painting, how will you describe its theme or motif? Letter A, it tells about the daily living of Koreans. Letter B, it portrays the mountainous terrain of Korea. Letter C, it shows the natural habitat of flowers and birds. And letter D, it illustrates the natural scenery of bamboos and stones. Your time starts now. Time's up! The answer is letter B. The painting is a landscape painting that displays the mountainous terrain of Korea, which reflects the artist's deep appreciation of nature. For the third question, Mountains and rivers are features that are important on Korean landscape paintings. How are these features related to the culture of this East Asian country? Letter A, they are places where Koreans go to worship. Letter B, they are venues where Koreans celebrate religious festivals. Letter C, they are tourist spots where Koreans spend their leisure time. And letter D, they are sites where Koreans build their temples and buildings. Your time starts now. Signs up? The answer is letter D. Mountains and rivers are significant features of Korean landscape paintings because they are sites for temples and buildings. During the Joseon Dynasty, in 1390-1910, Buddhist monasteries were often built in mountain locations. Villages and towns were constructed near mountains and river because Koreans believe that it will ensure good fortune for all who live there. For the fourth question, China is to brush painting as Japan is to blank. Letter A, calligraphy. Letter B, sand casting. Letter C, wood carving. And letter D, Woodblock printing. Your time starts now. Time's up. The answer is letter D. East Asian countries use various methods in their paintings. Traditional method of painting is usually done with a brush dipped in black or colored ink. However, woodblock printing as a method for printing images on paper is highly developed in Japan. Now, let's have our last question. Suppose that you are an artist and you want to make a painting that exhibits the culture and ideologies of China. You would consider the following themes except for blank. Letter A, mountainous terrain. Letter B, temple near a waterfall. Letter C, birds on the tree branches. Letter D, people gathering in a festival. Your time starts now. Time's up. The answer is letter D. The common themes found in the painting of China are landscapes, flowers and birds, palaces and temples. Scenes that display daily living of people such as celebration of festivals are common themes of paintings in Japan. How's your score? I believe you did great! To deepen your understanding and apply the knowledge and skills that you have learned in this lesson, do the following activities in your Art 8 module. Please go to 
activity number 3 on page 8 and activity number 5 on page 10. I hope that you have learned and enjoyed our lesson. Let us remember that East Asian countries generally focus on nature as their subjects or themes in their arts and crafts. Learning the art concepts of China, Japan, and Korea will be helpful for us to deepen our understanding and appreciation about the arts of East Asia. And that's the end of our session. See you on our next art-inspiring episode only here at Salida La Filipina TV. Once again, I am Teacher Mayan saying, let's make the world a better place through art. Pilipinas